Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone, we have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about sexual reproduction. This will be the second quarter topic and learning competency number 7. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to define what is sexual reproduction The second one is to distinguish the ways by which plants and animals reproduce sexually And the third one is to realize the importance of reproduction as an essential mechanism that ensures the survival of the species by answering the lesson activity in activating the prior knowledge, the students will indicate whether the following statements are true or false. Sexual reproduction is a type of reproduction that involves two parents, so humans and all animals that reproduce sexually have reproductive cells called the gametes. Gametes are formed during meiosis and come in in the form of sperm produced in the testes of males or eggs produced in the ovaries of females. Under favorable conditions, sperm and egg cells unite in the process known as fertilization. The resulting fertilized egg or zygote contains genes from both parents. Hence, the offspring have unique combinations of genes. Offspring of sexual reproduction differ genetically from their siblings and species extension is highly unlikely. The following are the types of animal fertilization. External fertilization is characterized by the release of both sperm and egg into an external environment. Many aquatic animals simply release their eggs and sperm into the water. The water becomes the medium in which the sperm swims to unite with an egg. The female releases several millions of tiny eggs into the water. The males to discharge almost all the same time in the same spot. Through water movement, the sperm and egg mix. This way, the chances of fertilization is greater. On the other hand, the internal fertilization is when the male deposits his sperms directly to the female's body. In the internal fertilization, small motile sperm are introduced into the female reproductive tract during mating. The sperm cells swim up the reproductive tract until they encounter a mature 
egg or oocyte in the oviduct where fertilization occurs. Animals that undergo in this type of reproduction produce offspring in any of the following ways. The oviparous, ovoviviparous, and the viviparous. The oviparous, this is the after the eggs are fertilized internally. It would complete its development outside the mother's body. The egg would receive its nourishment through its yolk. This is found in some of the bony or cartilaginous fish including clownfish, most reptiles, some amphibians, all birds, and a few mammals. Another types of animal fertilization, which is the internal fertilization, is the ovoviviparous. It is where the eggs are also fertilized internally and receive its nourishment through its yolk. However, the eggs will complete its development within the mother. They are then fully developed when they are hatched and released by the mother. This is common in some of the bony fish, some cartilaginous fish, and many reptiles. Another type of internal fertilization is the viviparous. It is where the eggs are developed internally and receive nourishment directly from the mother's blood through placenta rather than from the yolk. This can be found in most cartilaginous fish, some amphibians, a few reptiles, and almost all mammals including humans. The following are the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. The flower is the reproductive organ in flowering plants. Flower have structure that produces the gametes necessary for the production. It is a specialized part of an angiospermous plant that occurs singly or in clusters. Possesses whorls of often colorful petals or sepals. The following are the sterile parts or the non-essential parts of the flower. The first one is the calyx. It is a collection of sepals. It is a green leaf-like structure that covers and protects the rest of the flower. They also support the other parts when the bud opens. The next one is corolla. It is found inside the calyx. It usually consists of one or more petals. These are often but not always bright colored. Corolla together with calyx frequently attract insects. They may also help protect the inner part of the flowers. Another non-essential parts of the flower is the peduncle or the pedicel. It is the stalk that attaches the flower to the stem. Another non-essential parts of the flower is the receptacle. It is a bulging extension of the pedicel. The following are the essential parts or the reproductive parts of the flower. The first one is the stamen. It is the male reproductive part of the flower and is collectively called as androecium. It consists of the following. The first one is the filament. It is the slender stalk. And the second one is the anther. It is a knob-like structure located at the tip of the filament that produces colored pollen grains. Pollen contains the sperm nuclei which is essential for reproduction. Another reproductive part of the flower is the pestel. It is the female reproductive part of the flower and is collectively called as genosium. Pistil is also known as carpel and it is usually flash shape and consists of the following. The following are the parts of the pistil. The first one is the stigma. It is the spanded tip of the style and is usually sticky which receives the pollen grains. The second one is the style. It is a long slender stalk which support the stigma. And the last one is the ovary. It is a swollen base where the style ends and that bears the ovules. The ovules will later become seeds.